Hey, this is Eric from Catching Light. Hey, this is Hemp. Hey, this is Glenn. Hi, I'm Steve-O. Hey, this is Drew Hines with Hindsight Imagery. This is Matt Callahan at Digimati Photographic Services. Hey, this is Jason, and welcome to Tales from the Pit. Hello and welcome to Tales from the Pit, the behind-the-lens access for concerts and photography. Today, we have guitarist of Breaking Benjamin, Keith Wall. And Keith, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. That's awesome. So we uh, are a photography podcast uh, about a wide variety of things, but we like to talk about concerts. We like to talk about photography, and we like to talk about music and some of our favorite artists. So we're thrilled to have you on. To get things started, could you give us a little background about how you kind of got started with music? Yeah. Um, well, I, uh, I grew up in West Virginia, and um, I had a really good friend in high school who started playing guitar. And when I would go over to his house to hang out, he was always playing guitar. So I was like, man, I need to, I need to learn how to play this so we can like jam on some stuff. And he taught me a few songs, a few Metallica riffs and uh, I just kind of took it from there. The rest was history. And uh, slowly but surely throughout high school, I kind of decided at some point that, man, maybe I can try and just really do this for a living because I love it so much. And um, yeah, went to college and started my first band. And uh, yeah, just worked worked for a long time with that. Um, yeah, played lots of shows regionally around Tennessee uh, that's where I went to school, and um, yeah, it was. Can I, uh, it was can a lot I of ask work. if if there was was there a musician or band or or something genre that got you? What was the draw to the guitar? I would say Metallica, probably. Yeah, my brother got me the Black Album cassette tape for Christmas <laughs> one year, and I just wore it out. I was like, "This is so sick!" And you know, I, I slowly tried to you know learn the riffs and. And just uh, just kept it going, and then that that turned into other bands: Stone Temple Pilots, Alice in Chains, the whole the whole litany of of you know rock bands at that time. So I just loved it, and uh, it just seemed like something uh, fun to do. And I don't know, yeah, it's cool. So after you you've got your guitar, you started your band, you're playing out. I'm assuming around town or something like that. Um, what? Uh, we still, I mean, we're still bef- prior to you joining some major rock bands here. Uh, but what, what is that path from little local band to signed record deal? What happened in that time frame? Well, I had, uh, I started my first band in college, and like I said, we played regionally for uh, about eight years, and eventually it just, I don't, we played a, a bunch of showcases and, and just never could really get over the hump. And uh, I had a, a few mutual friends uh, that put me in contact with uh, another band that was signed at the time. Uh, and this band was called Adelita's Way. Uh, my good friend, uh, Greg Johnson, um, just was like, hey, he called me up. He's like, you know, I know you're kind of like a free agent at the moment. Your first band's kind of, you know, decided to kind of call it quits. Uh, would you be interested in, in, you know, playing guitar in this band? I'm like, sure. Yeah, let's do it. Any, anything to just play music at that point. And um, went up to Chicago, auditioned, and ended up getting the job. And it was it was cool. Uh, and I was with them for four years. And, um, yeah, it was great. And then eventually I just – I kind of decided I, I just wasn't um, – I don't know. I just I, – I tried – I wanted to kind of do something else after a while. And uh, just became another free agent, and they're still they're still rocking, they're still playing, and um, you know still uh, out there doing it. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I I wrote this kind of manifesto kind of thing on Facebook uh, when I was exiting that band, just thanking everybody, thanking the fans, and thanking management, and 
and the band guys. And, um, and I guess, um, through that, Ben saw it on uh, Facebook and, uh, he hit me up and, and we had done some touring with Breaking Benjamin with uh, that band. We'd opened up for him for a, a tour. And, uh, he was just like, yo man, um, you know, I'm looking to kind of get back in the swing of things with, with the band, you know, would you be interested in doing an audition and stuff? Well, at first he was like, send me some videos of you playing and singing and all that. So I did it. <laughs> I was like, holy shit, this is awesome. And uh, next day I set up a camera and sat there and played, <clears throat> did, did the whole thing and sent it in. And it, it kind of got me enough to have an in-person audition. And then, uh, yeah, the rest was history. Eventually we just, uh, there was some other guys in there that were kind of, you know, fresh members i guess and we just from that point on we just rehearsed for guys what seems like six months we were in there just learning all these songs and all the vocal parts and everything and uh, it was a lot of fun it was super stressful but super i don't know i don't know you they, they always say that that you know when you're out of your comfort zone you're going to grow a little bit so i was definitely out of my comfort zone it was a lot of complex things to to learn and I don't know. It's like studying for a test, but like, I don't know. There's multiple tests every day. <laughs> so, <laughs> Different but, questions uh, every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was, it was great. And I, I really got a, a feel of, you know, who these guys were that I was, you know, jamming with or potentially going to be playing in a band with for the foreseeable future. And uh, it was cool. We just really got to know each other. Um, I don't know. It was kind of, it was kind of like band boot camp in a way. We, we all, <laughs> We all kind of learned the parts and got to hang out, crash course. Yep. Now, taking us back a little bit, was your first like major tour? Was that Adelito's way? Um, you know, I I would say probably major major. We did some tours with with my first band, Copper. We did a tour with uh, a band called Jimmy's Chicken Shack. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we did a tour with them, and and you know they pretty much made fun of us the whole tour. So. <laughs> But I still, I still count it. I was like, that counts as a real tour. Uh, so, but so, uh, so take us back to the copper. How did how did copper get started? Um, well, we we, me and a, uh, my friend from high school actually that I started, you know, that basically taught me how to play guitar. Is that Shane? He, that is Shane. Yeah, yeah. You know Shane? No, uh, not personally. <laughs> I know. Some reading up on. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Yeah, I. Uh, he, he moved to Knoxville and um, we kind of started the band. We went through the whole process of finding a, finding a drummer, finding a bass player. And I, I met our bass player on uh, UT's campus. And uh, yeah, we, we entered this uh, University of Tennessee Battle of the Bands. And uh, we, we ended up getting first place. And I was just like, wow, that's pretty cool. You know, maybe we, we you know, we, we got something here. We won some studio time and, uh you know some gear and it was it was super rad and we just kept kept on going with that and you know eventually got got our song on the radio here locally in knoxville and a, a few other places i think nashville played one of our songs one time and um uh, and just got a few spins here uh you know locally and and, and a few few places uh in the midwest too because i mean the midwest loves their rock so we were fortunate to uh get a get a couple radio stations up there that that were into us so that kind of uh fueled us and and really gave us a chance to kind of get out there and play and but you know it's tough and it's funny as as, as hard as, as times were back then i mean it's even harder now i mean oh yeah not even not even counting pandemic stuff that's happening right now but just like even before that i mean for a, a band to go from inception to the next level i mean the cards are stacked against you like tenfold so it was it was tough <clears throat> the uh so you start playing you get you start getting some radio play do you get does that lead you to record deal or how, how what does that lead how does that how does that build for you well i think in a perfect world yes um you know it sets sets you up with uh i guess it gets you a little bit of uh the notice is what you're hoping for you're hoping to get some some sort of person to notice that you know there's here's this local band they're making some kind of noise here um and you know we we got a little bit of that we played a few showcases for for some labels but 
never could never could do it i don't know maybe uh maybe they didn't like my voice or they didn't like the songs or Dude, your voice whatever what, what have you whatever it was I, I, they, I think as photographers we can relate to that you got to get your name out there you got to get your product out that's good and it's for sure. not easy you know yeah if you keep at it keep at it keep at it nobody's going to notice you if you keep quiet so i can relate to that yeah it's it's definitely uh it's definitely you know any any kind of you know, if you work in the arts of any kind, it is, mm -hmm. it's, it's tough because a, a lot of the things are, are very subjective, you know, uh, and there's no accounting for other people's taste. Uh, so I don't know, but I don't not know, maybe not to mention competition. Oh yeah. Plus, uh, yeah. There's, and there's so many good, there were so many good bands too at the time. I mean, you know, I didn't, I look, I listened back to our stuff and, and I like it, but I'm just like, you know, I'm my own worst critic. I'm like, God, my voice sounds like crap right there. <laughs> or just I, like, you know. I, I was really, I didn't realize that was you. I heard you were in the band. And I was like, because I have a few of your songs uh, previously on rotation. So they would just be part of a rotation. So I hear them quite regularly because they were on my top of my list. Yeah. But I never put two and two together that that was you. So when I was doing research, I'm like, Copper, I was like, yeah, I know that guy. And I thought you were the guitar player. I didn't realize you were the singer. I was like, damn, mm -hmm. dude, your voice is awesome. You oh, sound man, great. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That's that's crazy that you uh, even know about the band. Most people don't, so I never bring it up. I never assume that people know because we weren't that big, but uh, that's no, super I'm crazy that you have that. Yeah, Call to Action. You know, I'm, I'm actually looking at the list here because I can't remember all the songs that's here, nice. but yeah, you had a bunch of, I mean, that album, uh, which album was that? Um uh, take my chances is that the one 2018 at yeah. 2008 yep <coughs> excuse me that album is really good i mean from top to bottom those are really you, you guys had some really strong songs on there wow thank you, <laughs> thank I, you. I, I i swear to god honest to god I, you get you your songs are in heavy rotation on my playlist absolutely <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny i did not expect to be talking about copper on this that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> well I, I i was i was just completely caught off guard by that because you know like i said you just just something you listen to regularly and then you realize you're talking to the guy who's the center of that so it's pretty wow. it's pretty uh pretty surprising and exciting at the same time so yeah I, any any plans for any future copper stuff at all or anything like that uh i you know never say never uh we we actually played like a like, like a couple of reunion shows um i guess the i guess it's been maybe last year or the year before I, I can't remember anything anymore, especially in this whole <laughs> pandemic thing, just days run together. But, uh, Oh yeah. Yeah. And the, uh, uh, let's just say over the last couple of years, we played uh, a couple of reunion shows and, uh, and it was fun. It was fun to, uh, you know, get back up there and play those, those, uh, those songs. again. I remember when we were the, the first reunion show, I felt like it went by like that. I was just like, God, we only got one song left. Like it was, it, so it, it must've been fun. So, and with Copper, you got three albums out, right? Is that correct? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yep. There's uh, there's Take My Chances. That's probably the newest one. Then there was yep. one, Fragile Fall. And then there was one called Exchange, which is so bad. I don't even, it's not even <laughs> up for listening anywhere. But if well, some, somebody I, probably has it somewhere. But I will say that if you go to iTunes or wherever, you can definitely get those albums. There's a ton of other bands claiming to be Copper as well, but uh your stuff i mean by far is you know the cool stuff the other ones are kind of whatever i don't know well, but, I, uh, I, I would recommend anyone who's a breaking benjamin fan or any of that style of music go check out that album because I, I that dude that album's great i really really honestly say that that album's really good just don't give me your phone <laughs> number <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> anyway so 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 from copper you go to adelito's way right yes Okay, so that is your first major tour experience, I assume. Yeah, that was kind of my first uh, first time. Uh, yeah, really on some major stuff, uh, and yeah, and it, it was definitely a learning experience, as you know, all t tours are. Even now, I still learn new things about touring. Um, but yeah, it was it was it was fun. Um, and how? So you're going from. 
you know, probably like, <laughs> you know, 10 miles an hour to a thousand, hundred miles an hour instantly overnight. I assume with all the touring and mileage and stuff like that. Yeah, it was definitely a change. You know, obviously we were in a van and, 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 and both operations. So that was kind of the same. And what, uh, what year was this roughly? You talking about come back up. Is it you talking about a van? Like you know, live by a, in a van down by the river van, or are we talking about <laughs> oh, yeah. a van like a tour bus? Yeah. Nick Foley. Band down by the river. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll hit that in a minute. We usually hit that one pretty much everybody that comes on, but that's yeah. What what year? What roughly what year was that that you joined? Uh, I want to say two thousand nine, two thousand ten. So probably, uh, probably I probably did the audition at the end of two thousand nine, and we probably started touring and and all the press stuff in two thousand ten. And they were probably what two albums in by that point or something like that. So they had just finished recording their debut very first. Oh, album. oh, oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you weren't on the original recording, but you joined on for the tour, basically. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Gotcha. Yeah. Everything was all recorded. So yep. So you're so technically because that's when is that the album they started? Uh, they blew up on. I don't know. Uh, I can't remember. We had a single called Invincible. That was on the first album. Right. And, um, and then the next album, Homeschool Valedictorian. Yeah. Oh, that's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one had a, a few uh, yep. successful ones. So so you're going from – so your first experience is van life on the road. Uh, how, many, how many days a year are you on the road for that? Uh, it was a good amount for sure. I remember uh, – I, I had never been to California and <laughs> and I remember just, we, we very early on, we had a show in LA at Viper room and, you know, I remember reading about, you know, Viper room and, and, and I remember STP, they did like a secret show when uh, number four came out and I was like, yeah. Oh, that's so sick. Viper room. That, you know, and I, then I, we got there and I, I didn't realize how intimate and tiny it was. I was like, Holy cow. Um, I don't, I don't know if you guys have been there, but it's, a, no. it's, it's a small spot. Um, but you know, definitely, you know, has that kind of special allure that, you know, um, but it was cool, man. It was, uh, it was cool. I was like, California. All right, let's do this. And, uh, and then we drove down to San Diego for another show and everywhere we went. I was like, wow, palm trees. This is, you know, this is awesome. <laughs> sounds, warm, it sounds yeah. so stupid. I know, but it, <laughs> For that, that kind of shit was cool to me. I was like, wow, desert. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, I'd been East Coast guy my whole life and, and just seeing, yeah. like, desert. And it's like a different planet if you're not used to it. Yeah. What, so, so it, how many of, were you in the van? How many guys were you touring with? Uh, there were five of us at first, I think. Uh, yeah, five of us. And then we became a four piece. Um, Oh no, there was always five of us. And then, uh, yeah, when I left, they were a four piece. So yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah. God. Now was that strictly U S or did you do international? What was, what was the, yeah. Yeah. That was strictly U uh, S. Yep. So, so you tour with them for what'd you say? Three years, four years. Yeah. I think it was like four years uh, yep. at the end of it there. Yep. Um, yeah. Played, uh, Played a ton of shows for sure, yeah. and uh, lots of lots of van days, lots of driving overnight, lots of uh, winter tours. You know, walking in a Panera Bread, just looking like a bag of shit. <laughs> yeah, can we have some soup? You know, <laughs> uh, but it was but it was good, man. It was it was. I wouldn't trade it for anything. I really wouldn't. It was it was a good time. Uh, those guys were good dudes, and uh, yeah. It's all, it's all part of the experience, right? Uh, there has to be some yeah. good stories that come out of a van that with five guys in it. <laughs> yeah, and, and usually they're not good. It's usually, usually <laughs> well, I bet they're where, really good. <laughs> I mean, it's usually ones where you know we haven't had a shower in two days. It's just and it's in the middle of the summer and it's just awful. Uh, there, there was, gosh, there was one time where I it was my turn to drive. We were driving overnight somewhere and we got hit but with this just huge blizzard snowstorm. And I remember everybody everybody was just kind of passed out, kind of snoozing in the back, you know, sleeping. And uh I mean I, I remember just being just the only one awake 
and there and i'm just trying to follow tire tracks in the snow and it's just snowing and i could maybe see some like you know tail lights off in the distance but dude it was scary i was just like guys <laughs> like guys you might want to wake up because <laughs> you might die. uh but uh yeah we made it through and but there was a few there was a few uh overnight drives where it was just like oof, it was tough but we got there we made it there so yeah, that's awesome. Did you guys ever upgrade from van to bus or anything like that? Yeah, we did. We did a few tours where we were uh, we got into a bus. Uh, I think it was gosh, two thousand twelve, where uh, we played uh, Uproar Festival, Uproar Twelve, oh, nice. one year, and uh, and it was great. And it was it was amazing going from a van to a uh, bus for sure. But um, luxury, yeah, yeah, it absolutely is a, a luxury, and and honestly, you know, you you need it. You know, it's 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 not something where it's just like, oh, they're just showing off. It's like, no, like you need the sleep, you need the rest, you need the just a, I don't know, a, a, a safe space to just regroup and because mm-hmm. you know, lots of green rooms and dressing rooms are not the nicest. It's not as it's not glamorous as as people think. Yeah, I've been to a few. We've you know, I have a band as well. We've played a few places where the green room is like. The, the shower upstairs is leaking on the room and it's like the yeah, carpet's oh yeah. wet. It smells it's like, this is not nice. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Been there. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure. I'm oh, sure. Yeah. The, uh, all right. So you go from Adelita's way. And then, like you said, you start talking with breaking Benjamin, you do the audition. Yeah. How long, what's that time period of how, how long was auditioning uh, with them? Uh, I sent those videos in. And uh, it, it was a, a little bit of time went by. So for, for a while, I just kind of figured, ah, shit, I guess he didn't like it. Or I guess I, 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 didn't, I didn't make the cut or whatever. And then uh, Jason, the other guitar player, hit me up. And he's just like, yo, dude, um, I got a couple questions for you. I'm like, okay. He's like, number one, would you ever consider, you know, jo- joining another band and getting back on tour? And number two, uh, you know, what if it was breaking Benjamin? And I was just like, yes. And yes. <laughs> uh, and I was just like, dude, I, I actually, I talked to Ben a while ago and, you know, I sent him some stuff and he's just like, yeah, I think they're, they're, they're starting to kind of get things going. And um, so, yeah, started the dialogue again with Ben and we, we got some, got the travel booked and, um, but it was a while, it was like four months, five months or something. So that must've been nerve wracking just waiting for that and, it, it was and it wasn't. I kind of just, uh, honestly, I really just thought that I didn't get it. Yeah. So I just, in my mind, I kind of just moved on. And I was just like, all right, time to get a job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, back to so, real life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jeremy says hi, by the way. He just sent me a message. Oh, right uh, on. Yeah. The uh, so, so you go out to... Uh, so you get, uh, I'm assuming you got the phone call from, or whatever, from Jason or whoever, uh, that you're in the band at that point, you go out or how does that work? Yeah. He kind of was just like, Hey, let's, I think they're going to want to do some more, in, you know, some in-person auditions. And right. from the time we went there until the time I actually, things were, you know, set in stone and I knew I was in the band, it was still probably another month and a half, two months because we just went over a lot of stuff and uh you know it was it was kind of a little bit then now that was nerve-wracking that was kind of like all right what am i <laughs> am i uh am i going home or am i staying and everyone was just like no nope, we're staying for a while i'm like all right well that's a good sign so yeah so so yeah is it just like rehearsals every day type of thing you're just kind of going through the catalog sort of thing yeah pretty much pretty much uh we, we kind of had this kind of rehearsal space where there was, there was a few bedrooms and we would, we just basically lived there yeah, uh, for that time period. And uh, it's funny. And where was this? Where well, was what this was, uh, it was in New Jersey. Jersey. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It was ocean city, New Jersey. And, and Ben would come in. He'd be like, all right, guys, you want to run it? <laughs> and we we're like, let's do it. And that was how it went down. So we would run the set a couple times and just kept on doing that. We'd add a song here and there, add a song here and there, kind of mix it up. And uh, yeah, it was it was a challenge. And plus, you know, I, I was kind of switching my gear also because I've always been just a, a, a an amp guy, like a yeah. real amp guy. And uh, 
you know, when I started with Breaking Benjamin, we kind of went with the, uh, the kind of the new technology, the digital yep. um, stuff with Axe Effects. And so I was kind of learning how to use that thing. I mean, it's great. It's amazing. I love it. But it was just new at the time. So, um, and, you know, there were so many effects also that, uh, you know, guitar effects that I weren't used to. I've always been kind of rhythm guy where it was just like plug the guitar in, turn the volume up or down. And that was it. I had yep. a sound. That was it. There was no echoes or delay or you know so with this it was a whole bag of tricks so so that was kind of interesting and fun to kind of uh get the hang of that yeah opens a whole new world so you're probably like switching pedals like every song has like five different oh yeah presets or whatever oh yeah a lot more tap dancing for sure <laughs> yeah uh so uh, for people watching this one of we we i'll edit it in but one of the things that will be surrounding our, our uh, conversation here is some stage foot backstage footage from your performance. And you actually are in the center of that performance when you guys played with. Um, Three days. No, this was a couple years back oh, at, okay. at our, at our pavilion. Um, you were with disturbed. Was it disturbed? Maybe alter bridge. Disturbed yeah. and you guys, I think it was. Yeah. yeah I yeah. think so, St. Estonia was on that as well, maybe. Yeah, I think they had canceled for that particular show, oh, but gotcha. I think that was the tour. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, I was on the VIP for that show. We did the uh back, you know, the, they we <clears> sat <throat> or stood backstage while you uh you guys rocked out the first three songs, I think it was. Oh man. So, so anyways, the footage that'll be around this is that footage of you from backstage perspective. Yeah, it's <laughs> wow. Jason Stalker pass. Yeah, yeah, my stalker <laughs> camp. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Yeah. But anyway, so so um so you, you jump into breaking Ben. Now you guys are hitting the road, and I'm I'm assuming that's just a whole nother tier now. You're on a whole new level of touring uh compared to what you've done previously, right? Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, there, there was, uh, you know, this, this band has a huge fan base and, uh, you know, it was kind of a built in fan base, you know, that I was walking into and I just was like, it, it was nerve. I was nervous just because I, I, you know, the, the, the old members and the old, you know, re you know, or the old incarn or incarnation of the band was, yep. uh, very successful. And so there was a lot of, uh, you know, there was a lot of, there was some big shoes to, to try and, you know, fill. So it was, it was tough. And I was, I was super nervous about how the fans would accept us new guys. And um, we were super fortunate because they, they have been nothing but awesome and supportive and uh, super kind. So it's been great, but yeah, it was definitely uh, some big shows and it, it super, uh, super nerve wracking for sure. And this is, you're jumping on right when dark before dawn. So breaking Ben had taken some time off. And if I remember mm -hmm. correctly, I think Ben was dealing with some medical stuff or something to that effect. I don't, I'm not quite sure. Uh, mm -hmm. And they, the band had taken time off and then you, the band had come back and started the album. Were you involved with the writing? Or was the album already done? Uh, that it was, it was probably 90% done. I think we, we all kind of worked on one last song. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that, that song was never again. That was what that one was. Oh, and, cool. That's, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was cool. And I mean, at, at the time I, I couldn't even believe that. I was just like, wow, we get to write, you know, something on, on the new one. You know, we, we've been in the band like five minutes. I'm like, this is crazy. This is awesome. You know? So it, it we were, we were blown away about that. Cause that, yeah. you know, we could just tell that Ben really was happy that we were around and really wanted us to be a part of it. So that definitely made the whole experience, uh, that much more awesome. What, what, so does that move you forward with writing for the next album? I mean, are you part of the writing process or is it, or is that a very specific sort of setup? Cause I know some bands are only the singer writes the albums or, you know, only certain members or whatever it is. How does, how yeah. does writing work? Yeah. Well, for the, that, that first album, uh, back out of the gate, uh, like I said, 90% of it was done. And our next album, we all just kind of, got together, worked on some things. We also sent stuff in, uh, remotely, yeah. uh, Ben, Ben, of course, he is the primary guy. I mean, yeah. and I would want him to be because uh, he's a great songwriter and he's a big, big part of the band sound. Um, but we all sent in ideas and, and, you know, we all kind of contributed here and there, both 
you know, lyrically, musically. Um, yeah. So it's been that kind of process and we're always writing, you know, um, I think that uh, it's important to just keep stockpiling ideas for when, um, you know, things like this happen is we got a pandemic, so there's nothing really to do, but just sit around and write. We can't play shows. So, right. Um, so all the people that are wondering if we're writing, of course, we're always writing, whether it's pandemic or not. So, yeah. So that leads, so that's sort of, you're leading into what I was going to ask next is what, <clears throat> what have you guys been working on or what's going on with the band since March, or, you know, since everything got canceled? Yeah. Well, we had just finished up, uh, our, our kind of, uh, winter tour and just in time, uh, it, I think I, I was home. March 1st, or I think the last show was March 1st. And then obviously two weeks after that, you know, the, yeah. the world, <laughs> the world came to a halt and uh, we were just like, man, that was, this is crazy. And I, I couldn't believe it, but I was just thinking about uh, our summer tour. I was like, I don't know if this is going to happen. Cause we had a, we had a, <laughs> a whole summer tour booked with, with Bush and it was going to be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and you uh, guys were I, you guys were scheduled at our venue as well, I believe. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. super disappointed, but uh, you know we gotta gotta be safe and, and, and wait wait till it's a uh, a safe time to go out and do shows. So you guys are just right now. I'm assuming everyone's still, I mean, still working on stuff. So there's no um there's no breaking ben new stuff that is ready to be announced or anything like that it's no no i would say no uh okay we, we've all just been kind of uh you know we we've been gosh we've been hitting it hard for for the last five years since since the band's been back we i feel like we've just been non-stop touring yeah so it's been a nice it's been a nice little uh break obviously it sucks too because you're forced to take the break but uh, now that we're here, we've been trying to make the most of it. And, uh, you know, we, we've all been spending time with our families and, and, and it's, it's been good and, yeah. and working on other projects, you know, everybody kind of has different projects and things that they're working on to, to kind of stay creative, but at the same time, still, um, still trying to write some, some new tunes for the band also. Yeah. That was a question that I had is what do you, what are you doing now? to, to kind of stay busy beyond the, obviously you can't like you, like you touched on, you know, you're not with the band, you're not touring, you're not, you know, what do you, what do you, what is the typical day for you now? Yeah, it, uh, it's definitely different. Um, I try to do some sort of, some sort of exercise. Uh, at least, at least I have been lately when the, when the pandemic first started, it was, <laughs> I think everyone was just like, all right, I guess we'll just hang. And, uh, definitely added some COVID pounds. <laughs> we all got the COVID 20. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Around my waist. But uh, eventually I snapped out of that. I was like, all right, all right. Party's over. I need to, I need to start eating a little healthy and get off my ass a little bit. But uh, yeah, so I, I try to do a little bit of exercise. Um, and then I just try to work on music, try to write songs, uh, whatever it, you know, whether it's for Breaking Ben, whether, you know, or any other kind of, project i'm working on i just try and stay busy and try try to stay creative with that and uh and honestly just positive it's just i feel like it's just uh such a such a better mindset to just stay busy rather than just just sitting there watching all the bad news all the time so i just try to keep myself busy you know so what's what would you say some of the non music stuff that you're doing for yourself to kind of stay busy and, and maybe, I don't know if you call it self-improvement or, you know, I know a lot of people are kind of getting into some different stuff that yeah. life takes them in a different direction. You know what I mean? Like you mean like bacon sourdough bread or something like that? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, sure. I didn't <laughs> like that. Yeah. Eggs, right. <laughs> uh, honestly, I wish I could bake some sourdough bread. That'd be pretty delicious. Uh, yeah. Other, other than just, uh, you know, tr trying to, um, you know, do the TRX and go on walks and, and trying to, you know, get outside uh, and probably, you know, just work on songwriting and recording. That's probably been the most self-improvement that thing I've tried to do. Do you feel more with. creative now that you've got this time? Um, I wouldn't say more creative. Maybe it's just, um, it's really just that, what you said. There's just more time to, 
to kind of put the work into it. Um, you know, I, I think uh, definitely writing is, is kind of like a, it's kind of like a muscle, you know, the more, the more you do it, the better you get, you know, at least that's what I, I hope. So the more time you have to do it, you know, maybe, maybe you just uh, try to get better at it. Mm -hmm. So going back to your tour days when you're on the road, what is your typical day? On, on typical, an off day, let's just say. Oh, on an off day? Yeah. You're on tour. What's your off day like? Uh, Depending on where you are. Let's see. Wake up on the bus. Um, I usually, I'm usually everyone, uh, everybody's usually off the bus by the time I, I wake up. Uh, are you a late sleeper? I mean, I guess sometimes, sometimes I'll, I, I feel like I don't really necessarily sleep that late, but I just lay there awake for a while, <laughs> just refusing to, to start the day, I guess. But, uh, I'll eventually roll out, um, walk into the front lounge and uh we'll, we'll have some hotel keys and i'll grab the key i'll go to the hotel um and uh yeah usually shower freshen up and then the next thing is just like find where i'm gonna eat sometimes there's a hotel gym uh you know fit in a workout and um other than that just uh just kind of rest the voice and uh take it easy and you're singing if i remember correctly you were singing uh, a couple songs during a set, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, myself and, uh, Aaron, the bass right. player, yeah. uh, uh, who does a lot of singing uh, as well. Great voice. Uh, yeah, yeah, we, uh, we're, we're basically just kind of trying to help Ben out as much as, <clears throat> as much as we can, you know, because if, if he loses his voice, then, you know, it's hard to do shows. So we, we kind of take the load off of him a little bit. Which, which your, uh, tour schedules at like three on, one off, two on, one off or something like that? Yeah, I'd say probably uh two in a row is probably the most. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. You know, for vocalists, you know, being a vocalist myself, I can't imagine having to sing like three or four days in a row, especially some of those songs are pretty crazy. For yeah. sure. And and just different uh yeah, it's just different environments, different weather, different elevations, all that stuff affects you. Uh, oh, yeah. like the, the high elevation that always messes with my voice you know i mean it's it's hard to it's hard to breathe first off uh but just <laughs> yeah it just affects my voice in a weird way and i don't i don't like it like there's been i don't know probably two times that we've played uh denver and then the next day i've lost my voice and i'm just like what is going on you know yep. Uh, so, and it's like, I, and I feel like I don't really lose my voice that often. So it's like a weird thing. So I'm like, something's, something's the culprit. Yeah. Uh, out of all the venues you've visited, I'm sure you've visited many in the country. Which ones would you say would be your favorite? Other Gosh. than ours, of course. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> he's probing for an answer there. <laughs> uh, hmm. Uh, you know, it's funny. I, I just, I just complained about playing Denver, but we played Red Rocks one time and that one was pretty, it was pretty awesome, but it's a terrible, it's, I, I feel like it's a super hard load in load out for, for the crew. So yeah. We've heard that. Yeah. yeah. Jeremy yeah. told yeah. us about that one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it's, it's, it was pretty magical being there. And, uh, yeah. it's, it's pretty consistent. The guys want to talk about our venue and they go, Oh yeah. Red rocks is pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I had a feeling it was going to go that way. Yeah, that's yeah, what, about, what about international and stuff like that? Um, yeah, uh, I feel like, uh, you know, we've just, we've only been international. We've only played internationally twice. Uh, oh really? Okay. Two tours before. And, um, you know, I feel like there's been some cool ones. We played, uh, download festival that was super cool i mean that's i mean i that's guess massive yeah. venue but um it was fun it was a lot of fun we played the uh the the rock am ring and rock am park those were super cool uh but and those it, are massive ones too right yeah it they they were super uh it was super crazy i remember uh we were me and jason we we kind of just walked out on onto the side stage it was before we were about to go on and uh, we were kind of hiding behind the guitar vault, but we could kind of just see over it and we could see the crowd. And I, we just looked and we we're just like, oh my God, <laughs> like this is, uh, is crazy. I mean, it's exciting. It's the, it's the kind of stuff you dream of when, when you're, when you first play guitar, you're like, man, imagine if, 
if I could ever get to the point where there is just like upwards of 50,000 people out there, you know? Um, yeah. It's, 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 there it is. <laughs> yeah. That kind of thing is just a dream come true. And then, then when you start playing, you're like, okay, first, first things first, don't pee your pants. Cause I'm freaking <laughs> scared out of my mind. No one will see you. They just think you're sweating. Yeah, exactly. Just play <laughs> it all. Say, was that, what was your first concert like when you played with them? I mean, were you nervous then? You said you were kind of nervous just doing interviews. So, yeah, I'm a, I, maybe I'm just a nervous person. I feel like <laughs> I don't blame you. You don't that. appear to be you're <laughs> doing very well, by the way. I appreciate yeah. it. Um, yeah, the first show was super nerve wracking. We, we actually played, um, with us, the first time we played, it was two nights in a row in uh, Luzerne, Pennsylvania. And it was kind of where the band kind of first started. So it was kind of a hometown intimate show. Wow. And I knew there would be just lots of just longtime fans that were just, you know, watching it and being there. And I was just like, holy cow, this is this is crazy. But uh, we made it through, you know, uh, it was it was cool. So let's. If you don't mind, let's talk about some of your stuff because you've yeah. got a quite uh, a quite uh, interesting style. Uh, I um, particularly, you know, last year you put out a couple singles, right? Uh, Crow and I actually really, which is a great song by the way. And I Thank also you. really, I was surprised and wasn't sure what to expect with your cover of Roxette. Uh, oh yeah, look, mm -hmm. uh, and dude, that's awesome. Those I appreciate kids, it. Both those songs are killer songs, man. Thank you. So, Thank you. so, so talk about your, your, your solo stuff. Well, it's, uh, you know, I, 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 I've always loved writing songs. I've always loved singing. And, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's just some things that I'm going to write and I'm going to work on. That's just not quite right for breaking band. Right. And, um, and it's, it's just, it's so easy to be able to kind of, get some get some songs out there nowadays so i just really wanted to do it and plus what else am i going to do on some of the off times during in between tours i'm just kind of like man i just want to stay busy and i want to i want to make music and and write songs and sing songs for as long as i can uh until i can't anymore because i just i i know that there's going to be some day where i'm not going to be able to sing and i'm not going to be able to use my hands or do all that so i just want to do it i want to i don't want to look back and be like man i should have just worked harder you know right. for lack of better yeah. words um and plus you know i you, you never know um it's just uh, it's just fun having a different kind of outlet you yeah. know different from the band you know and yeah. i love i love i love the band i, I love the music i love the guys um uh, but uh you know, it's fun having a, a challenge and, and challenging myself to kind of write different stuff, whether it's, you know, more poppy sounding or more alternative sounding. Um, it's kind of it's kind of freeing not to be uh, completely just kind of one direction. So it's been fun. Yeah, and I'll say that, you know, because, you know, not knowing I mean, knowing Breaking Ben style and obviously I know your copper style as well, but <clears throat> the. The, the solo stuff that you have is very melodic and very different from breaking Ben. So I find that that is very unique. Cause a lot of times when I, you know, you hear your favorite artist and they do a solo album, it sounds exactly like the band's album or whatever to a point. So right. your stuff is very uniquely different and, you know, very complimentary as a sort of different perspective on, on your playing. Cause I really dig your melodic style. And like I said, I really like your voice as well as for, for uh, the way you sing. Um, so thank you. Uh, I really dig your solo stuff as well. And, you know, I think that some of your solo stuff is very mellow in, in, in regards to breaking band is very, very heavy guitar oriented, but yeah. then again, you also have that mix in there as well. So it's nice to see that diversity. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, you know, just, uh, different vibes for different times. Yeah. Uh, you know, lots of times it's, uh, I, I think the first, the most chill thing I have is my allies EP. And, and that was basically because I just wanted to, uh, I wanted to produce it myself and, and I'm, I'm not the best producer. So I figured how can I, surely I can't screw up just a piano and a vocal. So that was, <laughs> that was the, the mindset with that one. 
but uh, yeah, I mean, some of the other stuff I've worked with some other people, so it's gotten a little bit more, more interesting, but uh, I really, I really appreciate it. Thank you. It's, uh, it's been, uh, it's been fun and, and I'm excited to uh, have some new stuff coming out. I've been working on a lot of new stuff over the, the uh, pandemic and, and uh, even before the pandemic. So what's the plan with the new stuff? So I, uh, I've been working on a, um, a full length and I'm going to have a, the first single come out January 15th. Sweet. So it's like a month away now. And I can't believe I'm even saying that. <laughs> like, I'm terrified. I'm always terrified to put music out. Cause I don't know. It's just, uh, I don't know. You just putting your whole heart and soul out there. And, um, for better, for worse. And it's not like it's, it's, it's a band thing. It's just, it's me. So there's, there's, there's nobody but me to, uh, I don't know, to hate. <laughs> what, what can we, well, so far, I mean, everything's been killer that you've done. What can we expect with that new single? Uh, any, any sort of, you know, stylish or anything like that? Do you, what would you, yeah. how would you describe it? So I would say this is more, uh, this is probably more rock oriented there's more guitar stuff um you know hard rock alternative yeah it's a little bit it's a little bit more um more instrumentation than the, the previous uh releases so uh so i'm excited about that i'm excited to kind of kick it up a notch and uh, i don't know maybe i'll just i'll just keep getting heavier and heavier maybe the <laughs> by the third album or second album it'll just be nothing but screaming even though i can't scream so <laughs> You can go any direction, especially with the way COVID's going. Who knows what's going yeah. to expect? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the now is that just you, or do you have a full band in that process? So I I worked on that album with a good friend of mine who uh, is uh, who produced it, and his name is Joe Rickard, and um, he's done a lot of uh, uh, mixing and, and production over over the years with various artists. And um, yeah, we just we really worked on it he he really did a great job um so and, and i look forward to working with him some more on on some more songs but as far as uh, a band goes I, I don't really have one per se i I've, I've been talking to a few buddies of mine uh that are you know various other musicians that are in other uh you know bands out there that i've met on tour about uh possibly uh performing with me if if, if it ever gets to a point where i'm out playing shows but uh other than that not yet you know going back to your nervousness with the um getting into this um did you have a hard time adjusting to the um fans and them clamoring and just i mean there they wasn't that much clamoring i, I think yeah. that uh just overall um it was just a, a new venture it was just a new uh situation and, um, you know, I was really scared the most of just, you know, them not being accepting of us. So I think once once that was kind of established that uh, like, wow, they're really into this and they're just they're just happy the band's back. And and, um, you know, they're they're stoked on some of our new songs that uh, that we've been a part of. Uh, I think that was that was really um to me, the part that really just calmed my nerves the most and, and uh, helped that help the whole situation for me. Yeah. I, we can relate to that though. I remember my first concert that I shot and I've always thought about, I've wanted to do that. And then once you're yeah. there and it's like, Oh my God, now here it is. It's in front of you. You have to make it work. Oh yeah. But once you get a couple of shows under your belt, it's like, all right, this is fun. Yeah. That first initial, you know, getting out there and seeing the fans and feeling the energy and, and the music. And it's like, whew, Oh yeah. Know, really psychs you up to do more. Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, what's funny is, um, so I, before our first tour, uh, back, I bought a GoPro and I, I would set up a GoPro, um, just kind of like behind us some, somewhere just to kind of capture the, the crowd and, and everything, just, just for my own personal, uh, memories. And, and cause I was just like, man, ho hopefully I, hopefully I don't get fired or whatever. It's like, at least I'll have these shows recorded or whatever. Um, but, uh, eventually I got sick of messing with that. So, <laughs> but 
But did you ever take tour, any pictures during the tour? Or? I did. I actually, I, uh, I guess maybe a couple years after that, I bought a, uh, a camera, a good camera. It was a, it's a, I don't know if, well, you guys can tell me if it's a good camera or not. It's a Sony a 6,000, I think yeah. I around here. Yeah. But, uh, um, awesome. Yeah. Nothing, nothing too crazy. I just, I put it on automatic and just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I wish I knew how to really, you know, use the thing. Cause I, I feel like I could get some cool stuff, but yeah, when, when we went to Europe, I brought it and took a bunch of pictures of cathedrals and, and, and things. And oh. but, uh, yeah. So, so when you're, tra- so when you're traveling like in Europe and stuff like that, you guys still have your days off in between and stuff like that. Is that oh, the yeah. most common thing is just go out walking, checking out the area and stuff like that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we played uh, Cologne, uh, Germany, and it was uh, incredible. We were, we were right across the river from uh, this huge cathedral, and it was just amazing. We went and took the tour and walked all through that thing, and it was just uh, – it was amazing. You know, this thing is so old, and, you know, there's there's – damaged from where it was kind of damaged from like world war ii and just like wow just this is the oldest thing i've ever seen with my own eyes you know <laughs> but uh yeah it was good to good to bring the camera along to capture that yeah when you are so let's talk a little bit about photography us being photographers from your perspective as, as an artist so uh you probably see or get tagged on thousands and thousands of photos of yourself what do you like and dislike when it comes to people taking your photo? Usually uh, the thing that I dislike the most is I'm usually making some stupid face, <laughs> guitar face, guitar <laughs> face. I, I can't, I can't control it. I just can't control it. I just, I get in the, into the music and I'm always, I'm making some stupid face. I wish I could just not, <laughs> I wish I could just be blank face the whole time. But uh, occasionally, uh, there will be a picture where I look halfway normal, but nine <laughs> times out of 10, I'm doing something that's, stupid. That's funny you say that because pretty much every artist we've had on have said the same thing. Yeah. yeah. It's always yeah. like a guitar face or drummer face yeah. or whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think, I think of it more as emotion. I mean, we were talking to Ryan Rocks and he's just like, I hate that one. I hate that one. I hate that one. And I'm like, but this is you getting into the song. This is what <laughs> we look for. We yeah. don't want to see just strumming away and yeah get, I, yeah. I get that it, it's yeah, um totally. i like it so but i'm not you so i, I don't have fans, to, i don't I want my fans face. like it too to be honest with you yeah yeah i think there's there's a there's a fine line i i feel like uh, as far yep. as you know what the artist might like it, mm-hmm. i mean for me personally i think sometimes if i'm making a weird face and it's it's uh you know mm-hmm. it, it looks like it's kind of a, a genuine thing i mean not not saying that what i'm doing is anything contrived uh yeah. but you know it just if it, I, I guess if it is kind of you know the emotion of it and that's tell you what Keith, when you come good. to our venue we'll make sure you're looking at us normally before we take the picture. How's that? <laughs> <Promise>. all right <laughs> I'll, I'll remember that all right you got it yeah. yeah and some of the challenge you know for us as photographers our challenge or our or, some of our challenge could be is our angle. So for example, I think you guys allow us to shoot from the barricade uh, where a lot of artists, some artists do some artists don't some, some yeah. allow us to only shoot from soundboard, so on and so forth. So, you know, we're always shooting at an upward angle, which can be very unflattering to people because you can have double chin, your mouth's wide open, all that stuff. So yeah, yeah, it's definitely, uh, you know, for me as a photographer, some of the things I've heard is, yeah, you you don't want the double chin. You don't want you know the guitar face. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't want tongue sticking out stuff like that. So it's really that face you of, made. That's exactly the one that I do. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> that was, yeah. <laughs> that's the lead right there. That's you playing lead, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's me. Just yeah. That's just me getting through yeah. <laughs> anything. But yeah, so you know, as as. It's it's kind of neat that we can do this, so we can actually hear from an artist perspective. Because you know, as as Hemp said, sometimes the what I find, and as he said, is the crowd or fans like these unusual shots that probably aren't very flattering and normal. 
right situations but they like the intensity or, or the mm. moment of it but i find yeah. that the artists are kind of different on that you know i don't want to look like i'm a crazy person or something like that right yeah totally i i think you know if 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 the photographer themselves was showing me the picture that i previously might not have liked maybe they can sell me on it with their point of view <laughs> but just my gut instinct and knee-jerk reaction of seeing a stupid face i'm like oh no so maybe uh I totally get, I'd be the same way. I totally understand yeah. that. Absolutely. And I have taken some pictures and looked at them going, this would be cool, but this isn't flattering. I don't, like we <laughs> put right. some up on the website I won't do it. I, yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I wouldn't you want got, someone to do it to me. So do you guys travel with like a videographer or photographer or anything like that? Yeah. Sometimes uh, we've worked with a couple people. Um, yeah. We always try to, I mean, it's such a big thing now, you know, yeah. with social media and just YouTube and everything. It's uh, I really, it's, it's, it's almost a disservice if you don't. Right. So. I, do you, now, is that someone for a full tour? Or is that just like you taking someone out for a, a small period of time for promo promo stuff or something like that? Uh, just kind of both, yeah. both. Um, but I mean, obviously we still, we still love, you know, having fine gentlemen as yourself uh, <laughs> there at the venues taking shots too. So, what do you, so when you're traveling with your photographer, videographer, whatever, do you talk to them say, you know, at this song, I'm going to do this or whatever. Do you guys coordinate anything at all like that? Sometimes, um, you know, lots of times it's just kind of like, uh, you know, you, you want to see what, what the photographer, what their instinct is, you know, right. where, where are they, you know, looking to get, uh, you know, certain angles, certain shots, um, but yeah, other, other than that, I mean, sometimes I would say, but not too many times. I, I think if there's a, there's a part like sometimes Ben will go out into the crowd, um, you know, that would be a moment, you know, make sure you, you, you get out there and get some shots with him with, you know, with, with some, with some people and, right. um, you know, so that's always kind of a fun, a fun couple of shots in there, you know, everybody having a good time. So when it yeah, a big problem that we have as photographers though we're limited to usually the first three songs. Right. So right. our work is quick. We got to get what we can get within that time frame. So yeah, yeah, that's if we could shoot all night. Yeah, we could probably get some really killer shots. And, yeah, I noticed. But that. it is what it is. I, I noticed that, and I always, I always, uh, I always notice everybody shuffling out, and I'm always just <laughs> like, oh, why are you leaving? I always hate it. You know, I don't. <laughs> we do too. So, yeah. If, if it was up to me, I'd be like hang out man <laughs> yeah this uh, there's a lot of bands you know I, I can't remember if you guys do it or not but there's a lot of bands that have like confetti cannons and stuff like that so they definitely yeah. got for safety reasons they got to get people out of there too so. sure the uh now your guys stage set up and stuff like that that does that change from tour to tour or do you guys have a setup for a full album cycle or how, how does that work yeah we basically kind of stick to um certain things for for uh an album cycle and, and kind of change it around depending on uh, the size of venues we're playing um, or depending on if we're doing co-headlining things, you know, sometimes we kind of share various pieces of, you know, the stage. Uh, but um, yeah, we try to try to make it interesting. Now I think I have some video of, and I can't remember. I think it was, Oh, yeah yeah okay so you guys played portland maine i believe it was you were in the band with shine down and seven dust was that you on that tour yeah i yep. think that's the, the the album you probably came into i think yep I think probably ran and you guys did i have it on video i think i just shared it uh, you start off doing star wars ben's yeah. got his lightsaber out there yep. and then you go into metallica i think and then you do Tool, and then you go into Nirvana. Yeah, and Pantera. We've been doing, maybe? Yeah, we've been doing the 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 rock medley for a while. We we Have just you? we just change up the songs that are in the medley, but it's a fun little section. We always think about maybe we should take it out, and maybe you know maybe it's maybe it's an old gag, but um, we just love it, and the fans seem to really love it. And plus, yeah. it's kind of a moment for. Uh, for us to kind of save our voice and just kind of rock out for a bit and yeah um you know take a little trip down memory lane and you know sometimes um yeah the metallica stuff ben always he's always just like why don't you sing that i'm like oh shit because <laughs> i mean i love metallica but it, again it's like 
I don't know, singing Metallica. He's very, like, his voice is so gritty too on your throat. Oh, it's, it's so awesome. And it's just like, gosh, if, if for whatever reason, if, you know, if your heroes saw your work in any kind of way like that, I would just be mortified because I'm just like, <laughs> I'm trying to do my best, James. So, <laughs> dude, you're good. But, you're good. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think that was, I want to say it was probably three years ago, maybe four years ago, something like that. But yeah, I, the, the medley was awesome. And it, you know, from my perspective as the fan, it sort of, it sort of, you know, gives you this uh, bigger perspective of the band. Cause you know, I know your songs. I know what, you know, what to expect for a breaking Ben show and to see yeah. you guys kind of go off the path a little bit with some of these other, like, Oh yeah, dude, you guys killed that song. Yeah. Oh man. That, yeah. I, Dude, I appreciate that. I mean, we're we're fans. You we're, yeah. we're fans of music. We're we're fans of uh, uh you know, all those bands and uh, you know, it's 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 a fun process learning those songs and and gosh, we we eventually started doing uh, uh Rage Against the Machine and just yeah. watching Ben rap all that stuff like perfectly. <laughs> I'm just like, "Oh man, this is awesome." But uh it's fun and it's fun to kind of change it up, but um yeah, we'll see. We'll see if we keep it or change it or get rid of it or something. But, uh, and I love playing Portland too, because of Jay's oyster bar. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, that's yeah. what everyone yeah. says that too. Yeah. Totally. Oh man. Mm -hmm. That is, that's my, that's my jam right there. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. Everybody Actually, I might be heading that. up there tomorrow. Oh uh, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. We've got a project up there. Oh, nice. I love oysters. I could eat them all day. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's uh, awesome. money. Mm. <laughs> So a couple of years later, you guys did an acoustic tour. Yeah. How did yeah. that? So, so how did that come about? I know I really wanted to be, be there for some reason. I, I think I was working that night or whatever. I couldn't make that show, but man, that must have been awesome. Did you guys record it or? Uh, no, I, I mean, there's probably some YouTube um, from, from fans recording, but um, yeah, we, we play acoustic tours. Uh, from time to time um, just to kind of mix it up and it's, yeah. it's 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 fun it's also a challenge just to uh, to kind of strip everything down but for the most part it's we play the exact same way the ex exact same songs the drummer has his full kit it's just acoustic that's so it. it's not it's not pulled back at all it's the same you're still playing the same thing just in an acoustic uh, guitar yeah yep. that sounds awesome dude yeah, it's fun. It's, uh, it's, you know, and it's difficult because there's not a lot of loud distortion and everything. So you're just out there. So yeah. every, any, any kind of, if I sing any kind of sour note or anything, I'm just like, Ooh, they heard that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's awesome. The, um, um, who was I just talking with? Oh, uh, theory, of, uh, Joey Dandenu, uh, theory of a dead man. He was telling me about their, uh, their acoustic set. And he's like, that was it's just so different but it was so you know it's, it's so grounded in its roots that you hear yeah. everything for what it is and it's just so powerful so yeah it I'm is a, it is I'm, fun yeah i'm a fan of that that definitely i i remember we played uh we played some i forget it maybe it was a couple years ago we had an acoustic tour and we played boston yeah at uh gosh i forget the venue but um not a super big place that's another thing about it is that, you know, we play smaller places. So it's just, you know, we can see people's eyeballs more and intimate. there's just something cool about that. There yeah. really is. And, uh, and there was just this amazing energy in the place that night. And just, they were just, I don't know, super loud. We were just like, I remember, uh, we just looked at it, at ourselves after the first song we was just like, Holy shit, this is, this is awesome. This is going to be a fun night. So it was cool. And you guys just put out was it last year the uh, acoustic the or, the aura or um, um, yeah it's like an aura. acoustic but all alter alternative mixes on some stuff too or something to that effect yeah it's uh it's kind of just an an acoustic uh, kind of uh, group of you know some of our our, our hits uh, with special guests and, yeah uh, and that was that was super cool to uh, get those those other great singers to be a part of it. Um, yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. They, they really bring a new energy and new life to some of those songs. Um, uh, so it was, it was awesome. 
Keith, we want to thank you so much for joining us again. Give us, uh, tell us more about your release, uh, upcoming. Um, hopefully when people watch this, it should be coming hopefully tomorrow, June, uh, January 15th, but go ahead and tell us more about your. Release yeah, coming. that's, uh, that's basically it, man. January 15th, um, new single out. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a minute guys. It's been probably a year since I've put out some music. So, Super excited for everybody to hear it, and I hope they like it. And uh, there's going to be more music coming out uh, after that. So, uh, yeah. So, what is the song called again? The song is called "Dream Away." And so, where are people going to find it? iTunes, Amazon, all those places, right? Yes, sir. It uh, all the uh, the streaming services will have it. And um, yeah. So look for Keith Wallen, "Dream Away." That's it. On January 15th. That's it. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much for that. Now, where, if they don't know, for some, if for some reason, somebody doesn't know where to find you, but where can people find you on social media and stuff like that? Uh, I am at, uh, at KJ Wallen. Uh, that's my Instagram and Twitter. Um, and yeah, Facebook is just Keith Wallen. That's awesome. me. Awesome. So, for everyone watching, check out, go check out Copper. <laughs> January 15th, get his single. Uh, go check out. I also recommend go, go check out um, your previous signals, uh, single singles. Uh, they're really, really cool. The Crow, um, your album, uh, hit us on the old album again, your solo album again. Uh, yeah, it's just kind of an EP. It's called Allies. And my, yeah. probably my last original song I put out was Crows. Yep, Crows. And, uh, awesome song. Yeah. Awesome. Thank Obviously, you. you'll be back out with Breaking Ben soon. Hopefully. Uh, Fingers crossed. We got to. Yeah. We'll be looking forward to whatever it is you have coming with that. Thank you. Uh, Keith, we want to say thank you so much for joining us. It was a really our pleasure to be asking you all these questions and hopefully <laughs> didn't uh, uh, make you feel too uh, uncomfortable or anything like that. Oh, no. Hey, no, Keith, you, got, you, you got killed it on Instagram, by the way, buddy. Oh, awesome. 38.4K. That's pretty good. That's awesome. Yep. I'm, you know, nice. All right. It's working out. That's a little more than mine. Well, <laughs> well you Keith, got one more. You got one more with me. There you so. go. I just, there you I go. just followed there you, you there, bud. Thank yeah. you. Awesome. Well, Keith, thank you so much for joining us. Hopefully, yeah, we'll see great. you real soon. Yeah. I, ho yeah, I hope so. On, buddy. Uh, it was a pleasure, gentlemen. Thank you guys once again. And uh, yeah, stay safe out there. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Tales from the Pit. If you want to see more guests, go to our YouTube page or go to talesfromthepit.net. We'll see you next time.